What's up everyone, MK Tom Brady here. So in this video, I wanna talk about Sub-Zero in this Mortal Kombat 1 patch. So overall, I'm just gonna spoil it for you because I'm gonna do a review here coming up in the next couple of hours, a video that I got uploading. I think the patch is great. I have a lot of good things to say about it. Uh, I think Sub-Zero in this patch is better. And um, everything in this patch in general, from the artwork on the new skins to just the overall quality of the changes, I think is of a significantly higher quality than anything that's ever happened in the game before. Uh, this Sub-Zero skin is absolutely beautiful. I just have kind of one little nitpick here, and I know it's art because it's nothing functional. It's a skinny man ice clone, functionally has the same collision. But these, this skin is artwork, and if you're gonna charge someone five or six bucks for art, you might as well have all the art look good. This was a bug that used to be present in all his other paid skins previous to this. They did end up fixing it a few months back. It's back only on this skin, so I know it will be fixed. Hopefully it doesn't take him six months this time around like it did the first time. So on to the Sub-Zero changes. So when I look at like patch notes, I like to see like what is the direction the developers are trying to go with the character. Like if you look at like Capcom or, you know, Tekken, Nick Namco, they'll tell you like, hey, this was too powerful. This wasn't strong enough. Did this for this reason. NetherRealm just kind of puts it out there and you got to figure it out. So with Sub-Zero, it appears that they were trying to slightly help him in open space, really help him out on the corner and make it so he can use resource for other things because he won't need to use them for combos all the time. So, for example, uh, the uh, Deadly Vapors, this, just the regular Deadly Vapors, not in hands. You see when you hit them, and they are slightly stunned. However, previous to this patch, Auto Block was triggered. Auto Block is something that's been in every Mortal Kombat game. It's those situations where you stun somebody, you hit them, they're stunned. By the advantage, the frame advantage, you should have enough time to hit them with something else, and yet they're able to block, despite they're in hit stun for a long period of time. Well, that's because auto block is triggered on that particular hit stun, which was the case here. Uh, it is no longer the case as now auto block is no longer enabled. So when you hit somebody in open space, you now are going to be able to go ahead, do a nice little 19, 20% meterless combo. Uh, you could use the cameo here. However, probably circumventing deadly vapors and just doing you know a strike into whatever your assist for a launcher is, is still gonna be a lot more damage than just the Deadly Vapors. That'll scale it some. So this is pretty much just for like meterless damage situations. Uh, also, the Ice Clone got a small, tiny collision buff. So it's got a buff to where if it's just in like open space, you know, not while well, the opponent's in hit stun, but they're a kind of neutral situation, the Cologne has a slightly bigger collision region. In hit stun, it has a significantly bigger collision region. This helps because there were some situations where you do a clone cancel, and some characters didn't even need to spend barb. They could just do whatever attack, it goes right through the clone, punishes you because you're minus 100 million, and you would die. Well, a few of those attacks in open space, and I mean only a very select few of those attacks, now will get frozen by the ice clone because the collision is a little bigger. And if they try to back up and do it, Sub-Zero will recover in time to block it because the speed of the attack is just not fast enough to have the character back up, do a move, and then hit you. Into the corner is where Sub-Zero got some significant buffs here. So Ice Clone, we talked about having the bigger collision region. Well, now it will freeze them for a full combo or something. So Clone, they're frozen, and you'll notice that uh, the damage is pretty good, almost 33%. That's one third of their life bar for a meterless combo starter. In the past, Sub-Zero had to spend meter for absolutely everything he did, even in the corner, unless he wanted to just go ahead and use something in the back two, which we all know how risky back two is. Now he has a way that he can hunt damage, good damage, meterlessly, and uh, I think this really, really helps him in a, a few areas of the game, and I'm gonna cover that in a second. So. I wanted to kind of show a few things here. I have Kung Lao as the cameo, and, and I was just trying to think what is the best cameo to show what was possible versus what is possible now. And just because I used a lot of Kung Lao in the past, it's just easier for me to show all these examples. I'm not saying Kung Lao is the best cameo. It probably is still Chameleon. We'll get into that in a second. Uh, but 
Uh, I just wanted to show you a couple things here. So in general, what this, uh, when you combine the Deadly Vapors buff with the Ice Clone uh, buff here, this allows Sub-Zero to circumvent the Ice Clone cooldown time problem that he normally has. Let me give you an example. So like, let's say you, you uh, like start a combo with Sub-Zero, right? And then you clone them, uh, clone them in the air. So you go for the, this, and then you would do something like this, right? Well, if I were to go ahead and hit them and try to clone again, unfortunately the clone won't come out, so I'm not gonna get the combo. And this is because uh, the clone is still on cooldown from when I froze them the first time. And it may not be this reset situation, but it could be several other situations to which you hit them, they're cloned, comboed, and then they get up mashing, you hit them, and you would go, you say you want to ice clone again to recombo them. Well, you can't because the clone is still on penalty cooldown. But now you can because of the deadly vapors buff combined with the ice clone collision. So let's say you go ahead and do something like this again. And let's go ahead and freeze them in the air with the clone. Put the hat out. Deadly Vapors, and then the clone. So normally, if you don't Deadly Vapors here, and you go to clone in the combo, it's not going to come out. You're still at the tail end of that five-second penalty cooldown for using the Ice Clone the first time. But now, you're able to have situations combo in a clone, whatever they do when they get up, if the clone is still on cooldown and they get hit combo in a Deadly Vapors, into combo, in the clone, and then you get another combo situation, all meterless, there is gonna be a little more scaling because Deadly Vapor is gonna add some scaling on it. But Sub-Zero is now able to do things meterlessly here when before he was gonna to have to spend meter for absolutely everything he did. So sometimes he just had situations where he's just not gonna get very good damage here because he doesn't have the bar. Or there are many other things that he would normally do that he can't do because he has to save the bar because he can't do anything unless he has bar in this game. So it's, it's a pretty good buff in these situations. Uh, also, where this also helps is, again, I have Kung Lao here. I'm just going to show like the armor break situation. So let's just say that we all know characters like Kung Lao, Tanya, etc. They Every character that has the, oh, I'm going to do a plus armored launcher, safe armored launcher, right? These situations. So say you happen to jump into an ice clone or they happen to be frozen first and then you go ahead and do a combo. Well, you can't obviously reclone them. So say you go for a setup here. And now you're able to armor break every armor attack in the game, including Havoc like this. And they are comboed and you spent no resource to do this. This is going to be like a 60-70% reset here. Also, uh, what happens here is if they decide and say, you know what, okay, uh, they are going to go ahead and uh, try to armor break me like they're frozen. You get them frozen and they realize, okay, this is an armor break situation. I'm going to go ahead and guard, right? And then you can hesitate and do something like this slightly for a forward throw. It's still a good amount of damage, almost 40% there, because they were. And this is off them being frozen first. Uh, however, if they, you know, decide and say, you know what, I don't want to respect that throw. So after the low hat comes out, they try and they block it. They try to then tech the throw, or or, or anything. The stand one will hit, will be blocked because they're they're thinking throw is coming, but the two hits. Now, it was impossible to hit confirm this too. Uh, just because it's a single hit, there's just not enough big enough window for you to react and see it hit confirm into EX Deadly Vapor. However, uh, let's say they don't have any bar here at all, so there's no risk of armor coming out or whatever, and they, they, get, they block the hat, block the one, think it's a grab, they get hit by the two, you clone anyway, so whether they get hit by it or they block it, clone is out, they're stuck behind it, they have no armor to get through it because they have no bar, or it hits and then they get uh, cloned and punished, uh, full combo. So it, it causes situations in, in which they, you, know, you, you weren't really able to get combos in certain situations, you had to spend bar to do everything, and really Sub-Zero wasn't exactly the damage juggernaut here, so now he can do it and do it again and again and again, and it's not like, well, he doesn't have the bar to do it anymore. Now he can just keep doing it over and over and over and over again. Every time you want to test him, every time you want to check him, every time you want to disrespect him on wake up or in these situations, he's going to be able to punish you constantly without like a situation where now I don't have any bar and now I don't have any resource. Now I can't break. I can't use meter for other things, so on and so forth. So these are very, very, very good changes. Uh, 
One of the things I want to point out is that, okay, one of the things he can do now, because he's gonna, he doesn't need to use his meter for all these other things, is there are just certain things he didn't always do because he needs the bar for everything. So he had to decide where is it worth using the bar and when is it not? So for example, if he happened to trade, right, with an ice ball full screen, like a projectile hits him at the same time as you get frozen, it was not worth it for him to do this for a, for a combo that does like 25% or something like that because he needs the bar for so many things. He would normally just do a slide. Now, this opens up these situations where you get these full screen trades where you normally would have to slide. Now you can dash in, EX uh, dive kick, and you can get combos in situations where it really wasn't a smart play to try to do that before because it's just not worth the resource. So this does help him in certain situations. Maybe you might want to use like EX slide in certain situations where otherwise you're like, I can't do it. I need the bar. I, I can't really try to get out of these situations here because otherwise it's, it's very little damage on this. I'm not going to be able to damage him going forward because I don't have the bar anymore. All these things kind of open up now in this whole game. So yes, the, the, the patch did definitely help Sub-Zero. And uh, when it comes to his cameo usage, he still needs a cameo that's going to have a fast cooldown. So he needs a very available one, Kung Lao, or maybe Serena, or Chameleon, or someone like that. Because unfortunately, Sub-Zero still is not able to do enough of his own heavy lifting to where he can be like other characters and pick a cameo that comes back in 10 or 12 seconds. Sub-Zero needs those five, seven, nine second cooldowns, uh, or it's just not gonna work for him. That's just kind of the state he's still in right now. Now, I, I, I do think they need to revisit the Ice Clones because it's kind of weird that they have three versions of them. You have the standard Ice Clone, EX clone and uh, Amplify 3 clones and then there's two versions of the Amplify 3 clones one that takes one bar one that takes two bars so what I think they need to do is give a purpose for all three of these because right now there's not they, they're all pretty much serve the same purpose and here's what I mean if I do regular clone and someone's punishing me through it be it with bar or uh, a normal attack that goes through it and I try to EX clone with the one bar. Sure, the clone lasts longer, but I'm just as minus and they're gonna punish me just the same. So like Johnny Cage, for example, he or, or a character like Raiden, he is going to uh, EX electric fly me if I do this, if I spend one bar for this, or if I spend one bar for this, or if I spend two bars for this. Let me just do this so you can see the, the resource here. I have super meter on full. So if I do this, if I spend one bar on this, if I spend one bar on this, or if I spend two bars on this, so many characters, not all, but a vast majority, are gonna punish all of these the exact same way. And they're so minus that it's not a read per se, it's just you weren't even expecting the Ice Clone to come out, you just happen to see it and you have so much time, you can just go through it and punish it easily. And it doesn't matter which one of these four versions I do, what you were doing is going to punish all four simultaneously. There's no mind game. There's no counterplay. Like, oh, I know that you're looking for this, so I'm going to do this and open a mind game. The only thing Sub-Zero can do is if you're, you don't even have to look for clone. That's the problem. They don't even have to look for it. So it's just more poke, 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 poke down one throw. Back. That's, that's garbage. That's what got the game in, the, in this situation to begin with. So... I do think they need to look at the three clones. I think the regular clone, its purpose should be, like what are the reasons for all these? Like what are they What are they for? I think regular clone should be as it is, like heavily minus, it's not made to, made to trap you or contain you, it's made to be like, hey, watch your step, right? Okay, then there is the one bar clone. That's single clone one bar. This clone lasts a little longer. However, it's so negative, it's tough to set anything up with it. It needs to be at least, let's just say minus 20. So instead of like minus 100 million billion, let's just make it minus 20. Most armor moves are still going to punish it. So it's not a guess if you're using armor. Pretty much every armor move in the game is gonna punish it still. So, uh, so if I'm doing this or this, you're still like, 
it got, you got it, but you, it would have to be a read, right? Because like obviously you're not going to punish this one, uh, this one here on reaction if it's only minus twenty. Very few, very 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 few armor moves would punish that on reaction. But you know if you're reading, he's going to clone. It doesn't really matter which one he does, this one or that one. You're going to be able to punish it with every armor attack in the game. This would be fair because. It prevents me from just throwing this out all day because, okay, I need to do something where he has to look out for it. So I should spend a resource for that. And then if you're reading it, you should still be able to punish me on a read. Uh, however, then I should also be able to say, okay, now I'm gonna do something like this. Three clones have the two a little lower to the ground so that they armor break. So one clone is just kind of something you do like as a, hey, get off me, watch your step, think about your decisions. This is more of a, okay, so you think you're just going to look for it and do it lazily, try to punish me lazily. Well, now this comes out, it's significantly safer. You're gonna to have to use armor and make a read. And if you're gonna use armor and make a read, I can still make a read as well and do that in armor break. These things are all like fair. And by the way, if I'm wrong and you do nothing, guess what? You are out of the corner as, you know, done. Unless I wanna spend two bars to keep you here, which that's still a significant resource burn there. So. Uh, overall, I would like to see Netherrealm do something with these clones. Now, I know someone's going to say to me, Tom, you'll never be happy complaining, even though I just literally gushed all over Netherrealm and a lot of the changes and how much better they were for Sub-Zero. What I will say is that you at home and me look at things differently. Most of you, while you all think I am the dumbest and uh, most idiotic scrub worst player to ever live, the truth is, for almost 30 years, I was a bad motherfucker. And most of you have never been across from Sonic Fox in top eight. Uh, I've only done that a few times in my life as he was much younger, I was much older. But on the main stage against some of the best players in the world, Scar, back in the day, etc. Scar is obviously still an excellent player, moving on to other things in life right now. Uh, but uh, all these people that you would run into like to get into top eight, uh, I, I've experienced that, especially in MKX. So Sub-Zero right now to me, is he a bad character? I don't want to call him bad. Sub-Zero, is he a character in which you can win regionally with? Yes. Is he a character in which you can win locals? Yes. Is he a character in which you can win or place in a lot of these online tournaments? Yes. Is he a character that you can be in top eight at the highest possible level? Several hundred people there, all the best players in the world there. No. And for everyone else, they'll come to me and say, Tom, but you see so-and-so, he got 13th at this major. He got This guy got 17th, six, top 16 at this major. What about it, Tom? But when it, I remember what that was like. In MKX, so many times, ninth place, ninth place, top 16, top 10. I was winning regionals, winning locals. You know, I remember Combo Breaker had the exact same entrance as we had for MK1 and MKX. I get ninth, lost to two excellent players. I come home, nobody says, hey, you see Tom winning regionals? You see Tom winning locals? Do you see Tom uh, doing all this? No, you know what you say? Tom got ninth, he sucks, he's a scrub, garbage, another loss. It is a terrible feeling going to these majors. So... When people say this to you Sub-Zero players, oh yeah, yeah, you know, look at this guy, 13th, whatever. Just know if that's you and you're not top eight, they will remember you as being gutter trash in the game. They're not going to give you credit for the 13th or the 9th so many times. Tom, who took you out? Ah, I got 9th, lost to Dragon or someone like that. Oh yeah, yeah, that's, that's pretty, nah, you're garbage, you're trash, missed top eight again. They don't, in, in the end of the, Sub-Zero is just not that character that's going to take you to the promised land. He's just not, doesn't have anything solid when you're going up against like, be it like either sets of twins like Unjust, Gakoi, or the Chilean twins, or Sonic, or Ninja, or Rewind, or any one of these players. He just doesn't have anything solid that's going to work at that level. He's got a lot of gimmicks, a lot of tricks, and this is with Chameleon, you know? Sure, you're gonna get some mileage out of down one slide, down one overhead Molina, things like little things like that. But that's not enough at that level. It's not super solid, and it's just not enough to carry you there. And that's what I mean by Sub-Zero needs just, he just needs counterplay 
to his clone situation. Because right now, as long as it's a get punished for free, then he's always going to fall short of being able to be a character that can compete at the highest possible level. Uh, there's just no counterplay to just getting obliterated for using it. And, and there, there's no mind game you can possibly do other than just don't do it. And it's, I just don't think that should be a thing. I think that there should always be counterplay on both sides. He just doesn't have any on his side. Uh, but overall, did help him. Uh, the, the patch did help him for sure. Helped a lot of characters, a lot of cameos. Uh, always love to hear your opinion in the comments. Uh, thanks for watching, everyone. Stay tuned for more content.